Welcome to our Mary Greeley Primetime Alive presentation, Ice Storms, How to Keep Yourself Out of the Emergency Room. I'm Vicki Newell, and I manage the Primetime Alive program. As a reminder, if you would like to join Primetime Alive or you want to sign up for other programs or see what we have offered, you can go to mgmc.org slash PTA. All right, our presenter today is Dr. Peter Buck. Dr. Buck has a long history here with Mary Greeley. In fact, he was born here at Mary Greeley. He attended the University of Iowa Medical School and received uh, orthopedic training at Mayo Clinic. He was in private practice in Boulder, Colorado, and then joined McFarland Clinic in 1990. He just retired uh, March of 2020. Dr. Buck is board certified in orthopedic surgery with additional certification in sports medicine. He served as a consultant for ISU Athletics and is currently a member of the Mary Greeley Medical Center Foundation Board. Please welcome Dr. Buck. Okay, good afternoon. Uh, yeah, my name is Dr. Peter Buck, and this is the first time I've done a virtual presentation, so bear with me if I look at the wrong camera or something like that. But today, uh, we're going to be talking uh, about ice-related injuries, so uh, Doc with a talk, and I'm going to be giving some advice about ice. Young or old, timid or bold, what to do when it gets cold to slip and slide, I must confide, and end with a fall may be no good at all. So we've kind of glamorized slips and falls over the years. Here's SpongeBob watching Patrick slipping on a banana peel and bingo, he falls down and we laugh and that's pretty funny and then Patrick does it again. And back in the yesteryear, classic Charlie Chaplin eats a banana, throws it down, Falls down. Okay, so it's hilarious. And, and of course, we've all last, laughed at this slapstick uh, comedy, but today we'll be treating this a little bit more serious because uh, ice-related fa uh, ice falls are kind of serious business. So the topic today is how to stay out of the emergency room, uh, and so we'll go into this in some detail. Now, um, there is a variety of weather phenomena that impact our life. And these would include thunderstorms, uh, which would include lightning, and the lightning itself can be dangerous, sometimes deadly. Uh, rain uh, can be torrential. Uh, we're all aware of tornadoes, and recently there's been increasing tornado activity. Uh, and when you're involved in a tor tornado, it's horrifying. It's um, associated with significant uh, damage and bodily injury, and, and it's, it's a big deal. Uh, We've had a couple huge wind storms. A year and a half ago, we had our uh, huge derecho, uh, which did cause significant injury and uh, damage to property. And there's snowstorms and ice storms. Now, to put things in perspective, though, so I went back and did some research. Since 1950, no deaths have ever been reported in Story County associated with tornadoes. And there's only been a handful of, of injuries, and only a couple of those have been serious in this 70-year period. And um, you know, our nation has an extensive siren system to warn the public about tornadoes, and that's great. But keep in mind that, that the actual number of injuries from tornadoes is incredibly small. Now, compare that to ice storms. Every year, scores of serious injuries are associated with ice storms, Hundreds of fractures occur. Here's what's significant. 90 to 100 of these fractures are severe enough to require surgery, so a big deal. Many of these are life-changing. Almost always they cause loss of time from work, and every year we have some deaths reported because of falls related to ice storms. So here's where I come in, because I was on call in orthopedics for almost 40 years, uh, in, in Boulder, Colorado, and here, and when we're on call and we get an ice storm, uh, to be honest, it's it's it, it's stressful, um, very concerning, and because we know that if there's an ice storm, that a series of patients are going to be showing right up at the emergency room uh, in terrible pain with bad fractures, and their life is in total upheaval. And, and these are very, very unhappy people that one minute every life was perfect, and the next minute they've fallen, and all of a sudden things are not only in upheaval, but, but very painful 
upheaval. And ice storms and injuries related to that are, are predictable. I mean, you know that uh, if winter's coming through Iowa, we are going to see that ice storms and uh, injuries because of it uh, predictably wreak havoc. Well, 15 years ago, Mabel had to feed her birds. Mabel was a very pleasant 85-year-old widow. Uh, she lived independently but didn't walk real well. But one of her joys in life was feeding her birds. And uh, she'd go out and feed her birds, and then she'd watch the birds and the squirrels, and, and it gave her a great deal of satisfaction. Well, uh, 15 years ago, she walked out during an ice storm, fell, broke her hip, and unfortunately laid there for a couple hours before a neighbor came by. Um, and she had uh, this injury that I'm gonna review. So on this, this slide over here, uh, here's the pelvic bone right through here. Here's the, the hip joint, so you can see the ball and socket. So this is called the femoral head, excuse me, the femoral head, uh, the neck of the femur, and then the shaft of the femur comes down here. And then these bumps of bone, this is the lesser trochanter and the greater trochanter. This is where muscles and tendons attach. So key, key structures attach to the, the bony bumps there. So with poor Mabel, uh, she broke, primary fracture line was down here in the shaft, just at the upper end of the shaft. Her lesser trochanter was in several pieces. Her greater trochanter was in several pieces. Uh, this is what's called a, subtrochanteric fracture, comminuted subtrochanteric fracture, un unstable injury. And as an orthopedist, we know this is gonna take a long, long, long time to heal. So she underwent a gamma nail for fixation, which is kind of a, you know, a, a slick operation in that through a fairly small incision above the hip, you can make a small opening here and under careful x-ray guidance, we can place a rod down the shaft of the femur. We make a small incision here and under x-ray guidance, we place this screw through the bone, through the rod, through the neck, up into the head of the femur. And it isn't shown here, but down toward the knee, an additional screw is placed across the rod to make sure the whole uh, femur doesn't shorten as it tries to heal. Um, but this is a bad fracture. We know it's gonna take most of a year for these type of fractures to heal. And unfortunately, Mabel's 85, she really didn't walk that well to start. And you take someone and not allow them to put weight on the leg and restrict their activities for even a couple months and they're never really gonna regain the ability to walk. So a, a bad injury uh, for poor Mabel. Wouldn't you know it, about a week later, this again 15 years ago, another fracture occurred. This was, this was in Beulah. Um, Beulah was 85 as well. Uh, she actually didn't have to go out and feed the birds. She just knew that there was a storm out there and she wanted to go outside and see how bad the conditions were. Uh, unfortunately, she fell, had a similar fracture and a similar outcome. But as you know, with hip fractures, oftentimes uh, bad things happen with complications and people oftentimes don't recover completely. So I had this notion 15 years ago that maybe we could have some type of Mabel alert, kind of like a, you know, a siren for a tornado where the word would get out that on a horribly ice-covered day that, that uh, we could let people know that this was tremendously uh, dangerous and keep people inside that shouldn't be outside. So uh, I drove down to KASI radio station during a, an ice storm and I met with the people at KSI and asked them, you know, what do you think about the idea of, of the radio station kind of sponsoring a Mabel alert communicated by the radio station that would let people know that conditions outside were deadly. And for those that didn't, you know, had kind of some, maybe some limited walking capabilities that they should just stay inside. And because uh, I, I, this was a passion of mine, I, gosh, it, it just felt, my heart just went out to these people that, you know, their life was completely changed all because of some ice. Uh, but the people at the radio station said, hey, that's a good idea, but we're not interested. And to be honest, things were kind of busy work-wise with me, so I, I kind of just had to move on. So over the last few years, it's become apparent that this really is not a problem just with the elderly, but uh, ice storms and falls related to it can affect everyone. So here's an example of a 44-year-old worker at Iowa State. He parked his car, got out of the car, walked in a parking lot, fell, kind of a banana peel type of fall. 
uh, twist his leg, landed on his ankle. So he had uh, this fracture of his ankle. This is the fibula. This is the tibia here. So he has a spiral fracture going through his fibula. There's an opening between these two bones, between the fibula and tibia, which means all the ligaments here have been ruptured. And then his ankle joint's been shifted to the outside, and there's this extra spacing here where ligaments here have also been ruptured. So he had to undergo uh, surgery. A plate was put along the side of the fibula, uh, securing the bone fragments, and a screw was placed from the fibula to the tibia to allow for getting those bones closer together, and then ligaments were repaired, and um, that's how you treat this type of injury. So this is called an open reduction and internal fixation. Um, and in this case with plates and screws. And the most common reason that an orthopedist puts in hardware for a fracture, the most common fractures are ankle fractures. So the treatment after that's non-weight bearing for six weeks, then a removable cast for another six weeks, then physical therapy. And he did well, but he, d he did have some permanent residuals. And this is a 17-year-old high school female basketball player walked out her front door, fell on an icy wood deck landing on her left shoulder. So here's here the spines over here, here's the collarbone through here, scapula is here, and the scapula or shoulder blade comprises the socket. So this is the socket of the shoulder, here's the ball. So the ball has been dislocated to the front and there's a fracture of this greater tuberosity, so this bone piece should be tucked in through here. Now what's good is that this is something that can be treated in the emergency room. So with manipulation, the ball can be put back into place. Fortunately, the fracture fragment realigned, and so no surgery was needed. But even this required immobilization, physical therapy, and she missed out on her basketball season. And if that isn't enough, then we have to worry about head trauma with falls. And uh, a lot of times, again, you tend to fall backwards, uh, hit the back of your head, and that can cause concussions. But unfortunately, now that people are, we have so many people on blood thinners that we have to be worried about brain bleeds. And this is a much more common, serious problem with head trauma and falls. And the number of deaths every winter because of this have increased proportionally. Okay, so, so fast forward 15 years. 15 years ago, I went to KASI Radio, and now you know things are a little different with me. I'm, I'm now a member of the emeritus staff. I'm on the foundation board, and I thought, well, maybe we can make things better. But I thought, okay, it's time to rebrand the Mabel Alert. We don't want to profile poor Mabel. Um, don't want to label so, and, and recognizing that that it's really not just a problem with the elderly. It's a, that casualties occur in really all age groups. We got high school people, we got college students away from home, uh, we got middle-aged workers who maybe balance isn't as good as it once was. We got elderly, so it's really a problem with all age groups. And at this time, I have a little more energy to devote to this. But in addition. Um, I pitched this to a variety of people, and uh, I was uh, directed to Chris Perrin, who is a wonderful gentleman and is really moving this initiative forward. So he's in charge of emergency services here at Mary Greeley Medical Center. He has boundless energy, he's full of ideas. He has contacts with the city of Ames, the police department, fire department, Iowa State University, schools, county agencies, and businesses. He has contacts with all these entities because uh, that's what his job involves, uh, because it's not just ICE, it's everything, every type of emergency. Great guy. I'm really lucky to have hooked up with Chris. So he and I have met a number of times, and we have described and put together a, a two-pronged initiative. And the first one is, can we prevent some of these falls? So, and I'll be talking about this in more detail, but uh, you have to have awareness that this is a problem. And I've tried to outline with the slides that just went up there that this, this is a big deal. This affects a lot of people right here in Ames and Central Iowa every winter. It's a big problem. It's not just a little problem. It's not just going to affect a small segment of society. Um, Chris and I have talked about strategies to minimize falls. 
how to walk, we'll talk about this in a minute, shoe, appropriate shoe wear, having <coughs> physical aids available such as sand and salt, and then um, trying to get the word out so uh, support systems can be set up before winter even comes. Because if you know of a, a neighbor that is, just doesn't walk very well, uh, you know, talk with him or her and, and you know, let them know that if, if, if you get a bad storm, uh, give you a call so you can run errands for them, but not let them go out when conditions are really bad. Now, parking lot falls account for about 20% of ice-related falls. That's really a high number. And um, Chris Perrin has found that there is a company that makes signs that, that would turn a, a different color when ice conditions are present. And so just, just an example, one of the things we're going to be doing this year, to, we're going to place those in some key parking lots and let people know that, that uh, the conditions are bad and really be, uh, be on the lookout. Um, how you deal with ice and particularly parking lots is really important because um, you can't be grabbing things in your hands and then trying to walk across ice. That does two things. First of all, as you know, if you have a partial fall, the tendency is, you know, you want to be able to put your hands out for balance. Um, if you have things in your hands, oftentimes you can't see where you're going, you know, because just visually you've got a block. So it's a strong advice uh, for these conditions to use a backpack and to do what we call the penguin walk. So this little movie will show you the, the, the rudiments of this, but uh, you, you want to um, widen the stance of your feet, take short little shuffle steps, have your weight slightly forward, uh, and walk like a penguin. So here are the feeders separating uh, little short little shuffle steps, arms out to the side to help to be balanced. And um, this is how you should walk in real slippery parking lots. Um, you should have ahead of time no shoes, uh, which are the best shoes to wear. You shouldn't wear shoes with heels. Um, you wanna wear boots or some other shoes that have a good s surface. And then getting in and out of a car, a lot of injuries occur getting in and out of a car because we tend to pivot on one leg getting in and out of a car. So be careful with car. And then you just want to be careful with, with how you walk. Walk like a penguin. Okay, so that sounds pretty trite, and I get that. Um, but it's really important. Um, you know, I, I was, I've, already we've had several days of bad ice and if you're on an icy sidewalk or, or parking lot, you, you've just gotta take short little steps. What you're trying to do is have both feet in contact with the ground as much as possible. So you don't take long strides. You gotta keep your weight over the, the middle of your two feet you don't want to lean back. A lot of falls occur with people leaning back, so you have to lean forward. You want to have your hands at least slightly out to help balance. And these shuffle steps, they're very, very important. So what are some common scenarios for slips and falls? Well, time and time again in the emergency room when I, people would be in there with their ankle fracture, they'd be walking down an incline. And the tendency of walking down an incline is you don't want to lean forward because, boy, then you might fall on your nose and fall on your face. So you tend to kind of be more upright, which is the wrong thing to do. Because if you're going down an incline and you lean back at all, you're going to slip kind of the banana peel fall. And that, I bet I heard that story several hundred times over the years. So if you're going down an incline and it's slippery, make sure you do the penguin walk. Keep your weight ever so slightly forward. We talked about getting in and out of a car because a lot of times you're pivoting on one foot or next to where a car is parked, you'll have, have a little lump of ice or something that really loves, loves to catch your, your, your shoe. Icy deck or porch, being in a rush, that is one of the key problems in the winter. It's cold out, it's windy, it's unpleasant. You just wanna get to where you're going and so you'll, you'll be in a rush. Well, if you're in a rush, you're, you're not gonna stay balanced. And I'd say that being in a rush is one of the most common denominators for these serious injuries. And we mentioned having objects in arms. 
Now, of note, uh, every week I get together and Zoom with uh, a group of doctors. And so we uh, met on Monday of this week and I told them I was giving this talk. And uh, as unbelievable it sounds of this group of 15, there were two doctors that within the last month had taken full tumbles on ice and, and fallen. And one was walking down to incline, one was getting in and out of his car and, and it was just horrifying for me to think in this small group that, that we could have had two people with serious injuries and they were lucky enough that that didn't happen. So other scenarios where you have to worry about things, uh, if there's ice and then there's snow, there can be submerged objects, curbs, rocks, things like that that really catch uh, you to lose your balance walking off designated sidewalks. So even here in Mary Greeley parking lot, I parked and the most direct way into the, the entrance would be to cross over these little grassy areas between the little banks of, of uh, the parking. Well, as soon as you do that, there can be chunks of ice or un, uneven uh, surfaces. And so the perfect area to slip and fall. So just stay on approved sidewalks. Walking with poor light, of course, that's a, that's a recipe for disaster. And then if, if, if there's a sidewalk that is canted one way or the other, that's, that's really a problem too. So uh, again, you just can't be too careful. So we talked about phase one was trying to prevent some of the falls and, and phase two of Chris Perrin's, my initiative is emergency communication. So getting the word out emergently when it's really, really bad. So we've talked to Chad at the National Weather Service a variety of times, and he, in addition to putting out information with the Weather Service about road conditions, they're also gonna put out information about walkways, parking lots, things like that in their National Weather Service information. And of course, that's the information that goes to radio and TV. So we'd like to get good information out to radio and TV about ice-related issues. We'd like to get things into social media to let people know when things are really bad. We'd like to have a phone app that uh, at least some people would have that would immediately notify them that things are really bad. And then Chris is already setting up direct communication with Iowa State University, schools, churches, health centers, things like that uh, on days that are really, really bad. Personally, I'd, if, if things, you know, a couple days out of the year, th things are just the worst ever, I'd love to use the tornado sirens to notify the town that things are really horrible, but I've been told that's probably not practical. So once again, I want to emphasize that although I was, uh, I kind of drove this issue forward, it's Chris Perrin that is the brains and the driving force of getting things done. So I'm really lucky that, that he's going to kind of take the torch. Uh, for instance, on Monday, he sent out a communi communication packet of information to a whole series of community partners. And it just has uh, a lot of things that I've been conveying right here in it. And then he's going to periodically renew that information throughout the winter to keep the topic alive and active. And, of course, um, we're kind of inventing the wheel here. Um, so we certainly want to solicit ideas from any people in, in Ames or the surrounding areas because there may be wonderful ideas that we are not thinking of and we'd love to get other input as well. So what can you do individually? Well, get prepared, be aware, don't treat lightly. So at home, I've, I've been through my shoe wear. Uh, my Skechers over here on, on this side are pretty ugly shoes, but actually they have great soles when, you're, when it's icy. So those are kind of my workhorse shoes. Uh, the Sorels are nice when it's icy and snowy. Uh, this through here is called Yak Tracks, which is good on some icy conditions. But if it gets really icy, nothing's really going to be that helpful. And then these are kind of like studded snow tires through here. And if the conditions are really bad, those can be strapped to the shoes. So I have those things ready <clears throat> at any time to be used. Don't have to hunt them down. Uh, this is my deck. It's wood. And already three times this year, this has been quite icy. So, you, you know, you get out your, your uh, salt, and that works pretty nicely on a wood deck. But then don't put it away. I, I just left it right there because if, it's, if these conditions get bad on your deck, you don't want to be hunting through your garage trying to find this. You might have to move a car to get to the salt or something like that. And any roadblock, then, then you might not use it at all. So just keep it handy. So be aware. So most people have phones these days with weather reports. So be aware when storms are coming through. 
um, listen to your uh, t TV, uh, weather stations, you know, but be aware when things are likely to get bad. And don't treat lightly. I mean, as Iowans, we kind of say, okay, winter's here, we're gonna power through it. You know, we're not gonna get injured, that's gonna happen to someone else. But if I could leave you with any message today is don't treat this topic lightly. So I want you to think, I want to kind of put the fear of the Almighty in you today that you're just one step away from a disaster, that this is not a theoretical problem. Bad injuries could happen to you with a fall from ice, and don't let your guard down. Now, no one's perfect, and we're not going to keep everyone from falling, but you've just got to believe that this is a problem and you need to pay attention. So um, in conclusion, yeah, it's not a real glamorous topic, I get that, um, falling from ice, um, you know, yawn, but it's a problem that we can make better. So be aware of your conditions. Don't treat lightly. This is a big problem that affects a lot of people in a very serious manner. It's not like a tornado where it's horrific, but we haven't seen a significant casualty here in Story County for 70 years. Um, make sure you have appropriate winter clothing uh, shoes, make sure you know which shoes are best on slippery, icy conditions. Use a backpack when you can so you don't have objects in your hands. Stay inside on those most treacherous days and encourage others to be safe. Help others. So if you know someone down the street that's really not, pretty shaky on their feet, you know, talk to them ahead of time. Or if it's a bad storm, give them a call and say, can I run an errand for you if you're able-bodied? but keep them inside. So our goal is not to eliminate falls. That's not gonna happen, but if we could just avoid some of the falls, have a few less severe injuries and some fewer related deaths, that's the goal. So one of our mottos is one step, two steps, short steps, slow steps, and try to keep your body weight right over your feet and be mindful. So, but even penguins can fall, so we're not gonna eliminate all falls for sure. But if you notice this penguin lean backwards, that's what happens. Keep your weight a little forward. And we can hopefully just keep the slippery conditions on a sledding hill and not uh, having you fall on sidewalks. So thank you for listening, uh, and that's it. Oh, yeah, uh, so if you have any questions, please submit those as Vicki told you to do early on and I'd be happy to answer them. Well, so the question uh, is a good one. Yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna go down to Anna's question there. Um, it says, if your hands are extended sideways, are you not more likely to catch yourself and break your hand wrist instead of curling into a baby position for an easier fall? Well, I don't think your hands should be out like this, but but if you have any type of slip uh, you know, at home, you're, you're gonna balance yourself this way. Uh, and I guess if, if you then are actually gonna fall, then it's okay to curl, but you know, it's, it's a choose, you know, pick your poison type of thing. Uh, you might break your wrist, or, or you may hit, if you, if you go into a curl up in a ball, you may hit your head and get a bleed in your brain. So it, you, don't, you don't really know what's best. Um, but if I had my choice of having a bad head injury or a wrist fracture, I'd take a wrist fracture. But so I don't, I don't know. That's a great question. Uh, and uh, but but I'd say that you you keep your hands out for basic balance points. But but then if you're going to fall, if if you can break your fall and kind of tuck and roll, sure, that's a good a good approach. Well. Uh, another question here is, aside from calling 911, how can we best initially help someone we come across who's fallen and uh, likely broken a bone? Well, um, I guess, you know, tr try to make sure that, you know, go through the ABCs, you know, make, you know, make sure they're, they don't have some heart issue or breathing or circulation issue because, you know, that, that's what you have to think about initially. But, but if they're conversant and that, that's not an issue, then you try to decide what... Um, uh, what area has been injured, and 
but but you know it, it's you have to be careful i mean if if the if the legs really angulated and really ugly looking i'm not sure you want to be the one to to try to make that better but but i, I guess you'd, you'd want to lie them down you know flat uh, uh make their head comfortable um maybe if 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 there's a an extra jacket or something you can kind of curl that around the injured extremity to to kind of give it a little bit of support but then yes call 911 and get help the other one was just something that i can answer so do you, do you want to yeah. answer All right, so then somebody said, how about an email to Primetime Alive members as a start? And this presentation has gone to all Primetime Alive members, inviting them to it. And we do have several people signed on today. We um, also take every program and record it. We put it on YouTube, and once that recording is ready, which is usually in a day or two after the presentation, we do send that in a link to all Primetime Alive members, and it's available on our YouTube channel for you know anyone else to see. So there will be messaging that will go out to all of our Primetime Alive members um, that will include this program. And it looks like um, there is another question there, Dr. Buck. Okay, so this question is, I did fall in the driveway and bang the back of my head. I was not dizzy or anything afterwards, but am on blood thinner. Should I have gone and had an x-ray? So good question. Um, and I, I guess if, particularly if you live alone, uh, it, it may be great advice for you to get this evaluated in the emergency department. Uh, if, if you have a partner at home and they can um, kind of monitor your your, your mental status, uh, th that's probably adequate. Most people don't have a, an acute bleed that just happens right away. It usually takes a period of time. But, but nonetheless, if you're on a blood thinner and you hit the back of your head uh, and you gave me a call and said, this is what you did, I would say go to the emergency room and, and get this evaluated because you, you just never know. Uh, could take a fairly small blow that would cause some bleeding in the brain. So, yeah, this is, uh, but unfortunately, a regular x-ray is not going to tell you much. I mean, if there was strong suspicion in the emergency department, they'll get a CT scan to, to evaluate for that. And then there was another question about the temperature threshold, that one. Well, uh, you know, the question, is there a temperature threshold at which the most critical time uh, to get people inside or that the, the things are going to ice up the most is what I think I'm saying. And, and unfortunately, you know, you would think that that would be right around 32. Um, but earlier this year, I think it was around the 10th of December, it was above freezing and uh, it was rush hour traffic in the morning. And, and even though it was warm, there were icy conditions. So you can still get ice uh, when it's uh, above freezing air temperature. Conversely, you can still get freezing rain when it's 20 degrees. So it's, it's tough. But I, I think right around 20 degrees is probably the temperature that, that most problems occur. And then there were some suggestions there about the alerts. Okay, uh, so uh, it might uh, comment, it might be helpful to get word out to residents of Northcrest, Green Hills, and members of Life Choices at Bethany. And you bet Chris Perrins is, ha, they are on his list of notification for sure. All right. Oh, oh is there another one? And, uh, so, uh, and the, the, PTA, that, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. was gonna address that. Yeah, okay, too. go right ahead. Yeah, yeah. Um, and sorry, I misunderstood the question about getting information out to Primetime Alive. That was to get the alert. Um, as of right now, I don't even know where the alert is and who would make that decision and that kind of, do we have that all figured out? Well, okay, so, so we're, we're, we're working on that. Um, and so, but, but Chris and Chad um, you know, are working on the criteria for that. But, but the, the goal is that, yes, we, the, the entities, including Primetime, Northcrest, all that would, would be on 
speed dial, so to speak, that, that would be, there would be a notification. Um, the exact criteria for that is something, you know, in evolution, we, you know, we're, uh, I wish we could say, gee, uh, uh, Eugene, Oregon, or, you know, some other place had done this before, so we're going to use their criteria, but we're kind of just working on our own here. So uh, things will be forthcoming. So you're a pioneer here. All right. Yeah. And so definitely, I would, I would definitely want our primetime live members to be involved, and that's easy enough through social media or sending an email, and, and we can um, make sure that we're involved in that as well. Um, one thing I have heard before, people talking about falling, Dr. Buck, and we've had physical therapists talk about falling, they would say, I'd rather have you break a wrist than break a hip. Is that, is there anything to that? Well, yeah, well, <laughs> like I said before, you know, nothing's nothing's great. But yeah, I mean, if you're looking for injuries that have a serious impact on life, a hip fracture is much worse than a wrist fracture. But um, on the other hand, if you're 30, um, your hip's pretty durable, and you may have be involved in a job that requires, you know, good wrist movement. So for that individual, maybe maybe bad advice. Okay. So it's tough. But but clearly, if you look at the big picture uh, and the the consequences from a, an ice related fall, hip fractures would be the worst. And I. I should have qualified that. That was giving a program to our Primetime Alive members, so older adults, and um, not to say that some of them don't have that need for the wrist, but, but there are so many other things that tie into a fractured hip. So anyways, well, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Buck, for the very informative program. This was great. Um, so appreciated, and I can hardly wait to keep in contact, and we'll keep all of you updated as well. Um, I want to remind everyone of our other upcoming programs. Thursday, January 20th at 2 o'clock, um, Motivated to Move is our program. And then Wednesday, January 6th at 2 p.m. is Faith and Spirit as We Age. So be careful out there, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Buck. Have a great day, everyone.